Well, it's sunrise in Indiana on Easter Sunday morning. Thanks for joining me today on Easter Sunday. I was, while it was still dark this morning, I wanted to take a look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, each of their perspectives of sunrise on the first Easter. In the book of Matthew, the angel is on the rock. Mary goes and the angel tells Mary that Jesus is risen. And he appears to her on the way back to tell his disciples to meet him in Galilee. And it, that always the reflection. I'm going to look at this like um, with drone cameras. I'm not saying that the differing viewpoints between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are differences. They're just differing drone cameras' outlooks of it. And the experience in Galilee was just very important, but I think it's interesting that that even though he said, meet me in Galilee, he still appears to them in Jerusalem because some of them weren't completely buying it. And Jesus accommodated that. But as I conclude here today, when I look at John's, we're going to see that concept of blessed are you who believe, but blessed even more are those who have not seen but believed. <laughs> that they've just obeyed. Oh, man. And then in Mark, uh, it the rendition there is that three, uh, at least three of the women, um, James and John's mom, Mary Magdalene, Salome, they go, the angel's inside. The angel tells them to go tell the disciples and Peter to meet him in Galilee. And then in Mark's uh, vantage point, um, and they say the ancient manuscripts, there's a kind of a footnote in some of the English versions of the Bible, that in some ancient manuscripts in Mark, the summary's not given. Mark's trying to give a summary of it. Um, and he talks about, <laughs> but what I love about this, the reason I'm bringing this up from the book of Mark is that I, I love what it says that um, Jesus rose that morning. Uh, as if he was well-rested, because he had spent 24 hours, um, you know, resting. He rose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, the power of his resurrection is what we celebrate on this Easter. And each Easter annually needs to be like a new year for us. Um, but every week needs to be like a new chapter of the Shabbat, the idea of closing a chapter to start a new chapter in our books of life. That's the idea of the seventh day. And because Jesus rose on the, uh, on the first day, uh, on the first day of the week, the crack of dawn, um, we celebrate our Shabbat, Christians do, on the first day of the week as a celebration of his resurrection. Uh, in the book, in Luke's version, uh, the angel says, uh, I love this, why seek the dead among the living? And then the um, women t go tell his disciples, and the disciples are in hiding now. Peter runs to the tomb, and we see Peter seen and then goes back. But this is where we see the first idea of the introduction of those two uh, men on the Emmaus Road. Seven to eight miles outside of Jerusalem, um, probably about, um, this is just a guess on my part, probably about three or four hours later. So, you know, the sun is coming up here in Indiana. Uh, and we're on New York City time in this part of Indiana. So it would have been probably late morning the because these because they were discussing about all the things about Jesus and Jesus appears they don't recognize him as Jesus. They just recognize him as a fellow traveler. Well, you know, there's something I, I want to sum it up this way, but there's something very special about how Jesus appeared to them on Easter late morning because 
relationally is how God intends for people to both come to the saving knowledge of God and then be discipled in the saving knowledge of God, person to person. Jesus appeared as a person to these two people, and then they insist he stay for some bread, and it was during their little meal they had together that they were quickened in their hearts. When they were quickened in their hearts and realized that Jesus had been with them the whole time, they ran back to Jerusalem, I mean, seven to eight miles, look up his disciples now, it would have been probably early afternoon on today, on Easter Sunday, to tell his disciples about their experience. Now, John's rendition is probably the most um, detailed um, than any of the other, uh, of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That's why we call them the synoptics, and then we, we say the synoptics, and then John because John had a completely different perspective. His drone camera went around in more detail, and it was actually the latest one published. And remember, John, the disciple, was the only disciple who died a natural death. Um, so he was around on planet Earth a lot longer than the other disciples as well, too. So in his, his rendition, of the Gospel of John was presented to us later than the other ones. Mary goes to the tomb and then runs back immediately. Peter and John then run to the tomb. John, John younger, runs ahead of Peter. As soon as John sees the grave clothes, he knows Jesus has risen from the dead. Peter, however, had to go deeper in the tomb looking for his body. The, John's pretty clear on that. They go back to tell the other disciples. Mary has followed them the second time now. She is crying, deep crying. And the angel appears to her and asks her what she's crying about. And she explains that they've taken the Lord. And then Jesus appears. Now, she is so... grievous that she doesn't recognize Jesus, doesn't look up, can't see him through her tears. Now, Mary is the one that Jesus casts seven demons out of. And I think that's significant here because those who have a lot to overcome are really pilgrims and seekers after their need for God. I don't even know how to explain it. How about this? Mary knew that she could not maintain her relationship with a living God without Jesus being present there. She knew that about herself. And she was desperate. And as she reached towards Jesus, when Jesus said, Mary, it was the same voice. She recognized his voice. I don't care who you are. You recognize the voice of God. Mary. She reached towards him and he said, just a second, Mary. I cannot right now, this second, give you what you need till I go to my father. And he's talking about the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, see, the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Now, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, it's all God. But this dispensational idea of what God's given us is and the, here's the word picture because it's not something that you can explain in human understanding. We just try, we just use stupid words as stupid human beings. I'm pointing to myself stupid human beings, 
<laughs> average or below average, just below average brain. Now I'm a C minus. Okay, I'm a C minus <laughs> brain. And I'm not being self-deprecating. I literally am a C minus brain. <laughs> I get on here and share out of boldness because of the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And truly, he could have used anyone else this morning, and he's used plenty of them. Probably the reason he uses me is I'm standing outside with the sunrise. I'm not using a bounce house. I'm not using an Easter egg hunt. I'm not using a free roll or donut or breakfast to draw you in you have to either watch or not watch but i want to lift up jesus jesus said if i'm lifted up i'll draw all men unto me i think these modern churches have missed that concept that first and foremost we lift up jesus on easter and jesus will draw them i mean as uh, in my pastoring days uh, my pulpiting days. Yeah, we would use different things to bait the hook as fishers of men. But the truth about it is the sunrise of our soul comes from lifting up Jesus. And that's enough. I believe when Jesus said, don't touch me, I've not yet gone to the Father. He's, taught, he's given us that depiction that he's going to come in the form of his spirit and fill our lives and fill her life. And then that night he appears to the disciples. Now in Matthew and Mark specifically, he said, tell the disciples I'm gonna meet them up in Galilee. But yet he appeared that night to the disciples because enough things were going on. They were afraid, terrified. Rumor was going around that they had stolen his body they were in trouble with the civil government. <laughs> they were on the 10 most wanted list, so to speak. Now, they knew they were in hot water with the religious authorities. <laughs> Terrible hot water with them. And they're the ones that had the mercenary guards. The Roman soldiers were nothing compared to the, what the mercenaries could do to you with torture. So they, they have their doors barricaded and boom, Jesus appears. And they were thrilled. And Jesus tries to give them instruction. The one disciple gone, of course, was Judas. He had killed himself already. The second one was Thomas was not there. Now, this is an interesting part of it. Thomas was not there. The disciples, for six more days, were so excited sharing it with him. Thomas wasn't buying it. He was saying, you've seen a phantom. You've seen Jesus because you want to see him, you know, on and on and on he would go with that. But the truth about it is, seven days later, the Sunday evening, seven days later from tonight, he appeared again. Jesus appears again to him. And he, and Thomas is with him. And he appeared for Thomas's sake. And he said to Thomas, touch my, touch my side. It's me. Thomas knew it was him and heard his voice. Thomas, he heard the voice of the living God and said, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, blessed are you to believe, but blessed greater are those who have not seen and yet believed. See, the fact that I'm sharing this and that you're listening to this, 14 minutes, 10 seconds into it. I got the timer right up there. Is not in your own strength. But that's the living God who's drawing you to him. That's what this is all about. The living God lifting up Jesus. And what I love about these appearances, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are the notes I have behind me that I put them is as I look at those I look at these drone cameras of the different perspectives and I realize that when you look at them and bring them together you see that he's promised us so much get back to Galilee get back to fishing but now you're fishers of men 
I'll meet you up many times there. The guys on the road to Emmaus, he's showing us the relationships. And that he not, and, and then with Mary, he's showing us not just relationships and not that, that he's just going to pop up from time to time, but that he's with us all the time because he lives within our hearts. I'll tell you how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Sounds like the neighbors are up behind that. It's Easter Sunday. Whenever you're listening to this or watching this. If you're not watching this today, I want you to think about this. Every day is Easter Sunday from that first one 2,000 years ago. Because I know he lives. I've not seen, yet I believe. And I've experienced his presence in my life. Experience it every minute because of what he's done. And the power of God within us is the authority of all of heaven. Because he's at the right hand of the Father, interceding to the living God. And his spirit lives within us. Father, I thank you for this Easter Sunday morning. I thank you for this sunrise on Easter Sunday. And just ask, oh God that you would give us the power of your resurrection. Let it flow through our lives. The hope that's in Christ, the baptism with the Holy Spirit, where we're completely, totally yielded to you and allow our best days to yet be ahead. In Jesus' name, we celebrate and thank you. Amen.